In this video, we'll talk about how to calculate the frequencies of musical notes. But what are we even talking about here? Why is this useful and how do we actually do it? Every musical note has a frequency. That frequency is measured in Hertz, which measures cycles per second or vibrations per second. So take, for example, this note, an A3. It measures 220 Hertz and it sounds like this. Where this note, an A5, measures 880 Hertz and sounds like this. So as you can see in here, the higher the note is, the higher a frequency it has. These two notes are two octaves apart. And in between them, we have the A4, 440 Hertz. The A4 is a very special note. It's special because it's the pitch standard. It's also known as the Stuttgart pitch. And it is the reference frequency used to calibrate acoustic equipment and to tune musical instruments. So why do we need to know the frequencies of different musical notes? Well, there can be many reasons. Maybe you want to make an instrument tuner, or maybe you want to make a synthesizer. And that's exactly how I came across it. I was doing some research to make a tutorial on how to make a synthesizer using the Web Audio API. And in order to do that, you have to define the frequencies of all the different notes you want on your instrument. Of course, you could just type it in and hard code it, but I thought it would be pretty interesting to find out how to actually do it programmatically. And frankly, we're too lazy to type it all out. So let's get to what it's all about. This equation. Yeah, it looks intimidating. So let's break it down and define the different parts of it. This is going to be the result. This is what we're looking for. It will be the frequency of the note in Hertz. And this will be a constant. And that constant will be our reference frequency, 440 Hertz, which is equivalent to the note A4. So far, pretty simple. The next part, A, is also a constant. It's equal to the number 2 raised to the power of 1 divided by 12. Or another way of saying that would be the number which, when multiplied by itself 12 times, equals 2. And this is pretty interesting. This is where the magic happens. Remember these notes? Maybe you noticed that the frequency of the A5 note is twice the frequency of the A4 note. 2 times 440 is 880. And the frequency of the A3 note, 220 Hz, is half of 440, the frequency of our reference pitch A4. So there's a pattern here. If we keep adding octaves, we'll see the pattern even more clear. But how about all the notes in between? all the notes within the octave. Let's take a look at that. Inside every octave, we have 12 notes, including one of our reference notes, in our case, A4. For every time we increment the number we divide by 12, we get a note a half step above the previous note, as long as we want the frequency of a note above A4, our reference note. But what if we want to calculate the frequency of notes below our reference note? Then we'll have to use negative numbers. As you can see, we get the frequency of the note a half step below the previous note every time we reduce by one. Let's get back to the equation. As I mentioned earlier, this is a constant. We're not going to be changing this number directly every time we want to raise or lower a note by a semitone. If you calculate two to the power of one over 12, it equals 1.05946 and so on. So we can either use this number as our constant or we can calculate it on the fly in our code. The last one we need to talk about is n. And n is actually the number we want to increment or reduce depending on whether we want to calculate the frequency above or below the reference note A4, which we know is 440 Hertz. So, if we take the reference frequency of 440, multiply it by 2 raised to the power of 1 over 12, or 1.05946 and so on, and we take that number and raise it to the power of n, we will get the frequency we want. So, 440 times 1.05946 and so on, to the power of 1, will give us the frequency of the note located one half step above the A4 an A sharp 4.
but if we raise the same number to the power of negative 1, we will get the frequency of the note a half step below A4, a G sharp 4. Let's try and make this equation work in JavaScript. Alright, I am here in Visual Studio Code. Uh, I set up a basic HTML file and then I'm just linking to my script here, my app.js, which is open right here. So let's try and make this work in JavaScript. First of all, we need our constants. And we talked about our reference frequency or reference note frequency. So let's type that out. And that is our A4, which is equal to 440. Let me just type A4 here. And we need to define another constant here. This one we talked about before. We're just going to call it A. And we could just set it to, to this number here that we already talked about. This is the result of this number. But let's just calculate it uh, here and put it in the variable just for the sake of explanation. So I'm going to delete this again. And let's think about what we need to do. Well, we need to take 2 and raise it to the power of 1 over 12, right? So let's do that. And in order to do that, we're going to need the JavaScript math library. And we're going to use the POW, raise to the power of function here. So we're going to take 2, and we are going to raise that to the power of 1 over 12, like this. And that should uh, equal this number right here. Let's see if it does. I'm just going to try to console log. Console log A. Save it and go to the browser. Yes, that looks right. Okay, so far so good. Let's continue. So I want to make a function that I can pass in some data to. First of all, I want to pass in the reference frequency of 440. And it's important that we can pass it into a function. I know this is a global variable, so it doesn't really make sense that we want to pass it in. But maybe we want to use it from somewhere else. And maybe we want to pass in something that's not 440. Maybe it's going to be 442 or something else. Maybe we want to fine tune our instrument one cent or something above the reference frequency. So let's let's do that. I'm going to call it hmm, calc freak for calculate frequency. And as I said, we wanted to take the reference frequency. Just gonna call it ref freak. And we also wanted to take another argument, which is steps. And steps in this case will be equal to n, the number that we raise the this one here to, depending on whether we want to go over or below the frequency node. So let's just return the result. And we want to return the ref frequency that we pass in. And we want to multiply that by math power. So we want to take A. So we want to raise that to the power of N in our equation. But here we're calling it steps because that makes better sense. Right. Let's see what we get. And let's pass in our reference note frequency. That's 440. And let's say we want to just raise it one, one step above the A4. And of course, we need to console log. And let's see. So we get 466.163 and so on. And that is equivalent to the node located a half step above the A4. So that, that looks like it works. Let's, um, let's try minus 1. 
if we look at our table of uh, note frequencies, we can see that that also makes sense. That's uh, a half step below the A4. But we get a lot of decimals. Maybe we just want five or six decimals or something like that. So we can try and do something about that here. And a way to do that would be up here, we could just actually run it to fixed met method on this here. So if I just wrap this in parentheses here, all the way here, and we run it to fixed on it, and we, let's say we want six decimals. Let's see what happens then. Oh, we still get something, but it's not the same color. And that is because to fixed, it actually changes the number into a string. So uh, we could just try to console log type off just to show you guys that it's actually a string, not a number anymore. Let me show you something in the console. We want to do a little bit extra here. Let me go back to the console and let me type in something in order to use the to fixed method we will have to pass in a floating number, like a floating point. Um, if we, let's say we have 440. And we run it to fixed on this one here. It's going to give me an error. Why? Well, because this one here, it sees this as the decimal point. So the right way of doing this would be to wrap this in parentheses. So, 440 to fixed. Then we would get the string of 440. Of course, we could go ahead and do something like this and run it to fixed on that. That would work as well. And now I'm not passing in how many decimals we want, so I'm going to do that right here. All right, so let's go back and let's actually in our code, let's make a variable up here. So let's just take all of this stuff that we took down here and I'm going to call it result because that's what we want to return the result. And let's just call it this here and all the way to here and put it up here. All right, that's what we started out with. So we want to actually return the ret result. So let's wrap the result in parentheses. And let's run it to fix on that. And let's just say we want four decimals. That should, that should be enough. Let's see what happens then. Oh, it's still the type. It's, uh, and that's actually the answer that I wanted to get to. Let's see what happens. Well, it's still a string, as you can see. We want it to be a number because we want to do, maybe we want to do calculations with it. Uh, maybe we want to use it for the web audio API, something like that. And a way of doing that would actually just be to put a plus in front of this. That way, it's a little trick you can use to change a string number in JavaScript to a number. So if you just put this one in front of it, it will add something to the result of this here. And then because you have this operator, the plus operator, the add operator, then it'll just automatically be converted to being a number. So let's just uh, let's just try it out here. I'm just going to remove this first. And I get a string, but we want a number, so let's just add the plus again and we get a number so uh, it should hopefully work now let's try it out uh, this is we already tried this let's try to pass in the zero we get 440 which is our reference note so that's great a one is a half step above that so 466.16 which is uh, it looks right two three four five six, seven, and so on. If we pass in a negative number, minus one, it also looks like it works. And minus two, minus three, minus four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on and so forth. And when we exceed the octave that goes before 
the A4, so that would be minus, that's 24, so that would be two octaves, so that would be 110. Um, so it all seems to make sense, and it all seems to work. So that's all I wanted to explain in this video, but I want to go a bit further with this. So in the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to actually create a function that calculates the frequencies of the notes within a range. So something like this, let's call it, I don't know, calculate note frequencies something like that and then let's just pass in a range so we want to start it with a start note and then the end note and that could be either like uh yeah it could be this could be a0 it could be a1 it could be c sharp one and then end at uh, this note maybe it's in the sixth octave so it could be like i don't know f sharp six or something like that and then we would get a result from that so let's have a look at how we can do that in the next video i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please leave a comment like it share it all that stuff that all the cool youtubers say so see you in the next video